Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we're going to talk about what may be the most underutilized tool of your mixer, the oscillator. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So for those of you who don't know, the oscillator is basically a tone generator uh, or a noise generator. And you might be asking yourself, why do you need this? Well, it's really useful for testing outputs uh, on your console. Um, so this will be helpful if you are, especially if you're a teardown setup church, um, because you're going to uh, be setting up speakers every week and you'll more than likely have some volunteers who may or may not know what they're doing. And it's easy for things to get plugged in wrong. Your left could be plugged into your right. Your right could be plugged into your left. Your subs could be plugged in wrong. The monitors could be plugged in wrong. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. So once you've gotten everything plugged in, um, this is a really quick way to go through and just test each output individually so you can immediately know if something's right or wrong um, and it makes things a little, lot easier in the long run. For example, uh, there's a local church that we work with that uh, they have balcony speakers. They're not a teardown setup church. Um, but they've got balcony speakers in their room um, that because of uh, electrical codes, um, you have to go to a separate part of the building to turn these on and off. Um, and so it's very easy when it's early in the morning to forget to turn those speakers on. And, uh, and because they're balcony fill speakers, it's not always immediately obvious that they're not on. Um, so one thing we started implementing is for them, every time they turn the system on, just to go through and test all their matrices um, so you can test each individual group and make sure they're all working. And when you get to the balcony speakers, um, you'll either have noise come through or you won't. And if you don't, then you know, okay, someone forgot to hit that breaker and you can go and, and fix that. Um, so what we're going to look at today is a separate church. Uh, again, this is a, a traditional church, um, that is not, uh, set up tear down. Um, but they've got, uh, a lot of different amps and stuff and, just to make sure everything's working and for, uh, for uh, testing sake when things are acting up, uh, we're going to show you how they can go through and test uh, each of the speakers, including the stage monitors. They've got um, stage wedges and show you how to do that. All right, so we are taking a look at the uh, editing app for this particular church's uh, setup here. And um, let me show you down here on our outputs what we're going to be working with. Um, so again, this is a traditional church with uh, several different uh, speaker groups. So if we look at our matrices here, we can see that we have them set up with a main left, a main right, uh, a center cluster, a balcony set of speakers, um, and assisted listening for their, uh, their hard of hearing um, churchgoers, and then a lobby feed. And then if we look over on our bus outputs, we've got a... A um, couple of front monitors, some choir monitors, and then the pianist and the organist have their own um, monitors as well. Um, so quite a lot of speaker groups, uh, when they go and, and set up for their church each week, um, they have to go and physically turn on uh, the speakers. And um, rather than leaving it up to the people on stage to remember how to do this, uh, the uh, sound techs usually do it. Uh, but if they forget they can go through and use this uh, the setting so they can go and test that each of those speakers is working. So we're going to start by looking at our matrices. And you don't have to actually look at this for this to work, um, but it's just going to help us to visualize, make sure that we're going to the correct outputs. Um, so we're looking at our matrices for our, our main system here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on our um, our monitor section, which on the app is right here. If you're looking at the actual console, uh, it's going to be kind of over and to your right. Uh, there's going to be a talk back view button and a monitor view button. They both go to the same place. Uh, they go to here. And of course, you need to scroll over to your oscillator tab. So a real quick explanation of what we're looking at here. Uh, we have a uh, tone on and off. If you're on the actual console, that will be a push button down here. Um, so that just turns the oscillator on and off. Uh, we've got the oscillator level, which we want to start with it all the way down at negative infinity. So it's essentially muted. 
Uh, if you're using the sine wave function over here, you've got two different frequencies that you can cycle between and you can move these up and down. Uh, this might be useful if say you don't have a separate send for your, um, your mains and your subs. Uh, if, if you're a set up teardown church, you might have those plugged in together. Um, so if you have a really low frequency, then, um, you should just hear that coming out of the subs. And if you have a frequency above the crossover point, then you should just hear that coming out of your mains. And so that might be useful for testing those um, since they're not on separate outputs. Uh, we're going to mostly be using pink noise today, which is uh, just a kind of random noise um, that's going to be generated. Um, white noise would work fine too, but we're just going to use pink. Uh, and then over here you have your destination. Uh, so this is which of your output groups um, is the tone generator going to be sending signal to. So you've got all of your mixes, 1 through 16. You've got main left, right, um, the two together, and the center cluster. And so that's not referring to these main left and rights because these are matrices I created. It's, cr it's uh, referring to your left-right mix over here. So you can do just the left side, the right side, the two of them together. You can do the, uh, the mono send, which is right here. Um, or you can go down and do all your matrices, which is what we're going to do today. So first thing I want to do is I want to get sound to come out of the left speaker uh, so that I can make sure that's hooked up properly. So I'm going to click on matrix one. I'm going to make sure that my oscillator is all the way down um, before I turn the tone on because I don't know uh, how loud this amplifier is set. I don't want to blow anything up. So with it all the way down, I'll turn my tone generator on and start turning the oscillator up. And again, this is just an example today, so you're not actually going to hear it because I'm, I'm in the studio, not at that church. Uh, but you can see we're getting signal coming out of the generator. And then you can see down here that we are getting signal coming out of that matrix. And assuming that everything's hooked up correctly, I should be able to hear the sound of this coming out of the left speaker in the room. Um, now I can go ahead and select matrix two. And you can see that it moved over to matrix two. Um, which is the main right. So I should be able to hear the right side of the room. Uh, if this mute is engaged, you're not going to hear any sound because uh, it's going through this signal path. Matrix three is my center cluster. Four is my balcony. Five, if someone has the assisted listening pack on, they'll hear that. And then six, I should be able to hear it in the lobby. Uh, so now if I go over to... Uh, my buses. And again, I don't have to be on this page for this to work. Um, just visually, it's helpful. So I can see that bus one is my, um, my front wedges. Um, I don't know how loud those are set. So again, it's always safe. Turn your oscillator down. Select mix bus one. Oscillator up. And you can see I've got signal coming out of my oscillator going to bus one, and assuming those speakers are turned on and plugged in correctly, I should be able to hear that now. And then here's what the choir's hearing, what the pianist is hearing, what the organist is hearing. You can see as I click each one of those, it goes to a different group. Um, they have a hard uh, hardware recorder as well, um, a task cam unit, so if I wanted to test those, same deal, that should come out the left side of the recording and the right side of the recording. Now, very, very important. Once I'm done with this, it, it isn't as simple as just turning the oscillator down. Um, they give you a little warning up here. It says, when activated, oscillator replaces destination signal. So what that means is that even if I turn the oscillator down, um, currently, because I'm on mix eight, which is the right side of the recording, the recording would not be producing any sound on the right side because it is selected and the tone generator is on. So as soon as you're done, you need to turn your oscillator down just for good, good habit, and then you need to turn off your tone generator. Otherwise, you're not gonna get any signal coming through. Now that's uh, specifically for the Behringer and Midas consoles. Uh, that may be different if you're on a different brand, um, but still, it's just a good, uh, good habit to go ahead and turn it off, turn the volume down, so that you don't have any surprises uh, later on. So a pretty useful trick if you're going to go through and test all your outputs, make sure everything's working okay. 
I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave a comment on our YouTube page. If you'd like to request a specific video for the future, uh, you can comment below or you can email me at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and to share. And uh, until next week, have a great day. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.